What's going on, everyone? Man, what a boring day. Did not think this was going to happen, but hey, there's always tomorrow. Let's talk about proxy portfolios real quick out of SR NYSC ARCA 2021-84. Roll that wheel, baby. Come on, GME. AMC, let's go. Anyways, the purpose of this one, um, they adopted rule 8.601-E for the purpose of permitting the listing and trading or trading pursuant to unlisted trading privileges. UTP of active proxy portfolio shares, which are securities issued by an actively managed open and investment management company. Commentary 0 0.01 to rule 8.06 or 8.601-E requires the exchange file a separate proposal of the act before listing and trading any series of an active proxy portfolio on the exchange. Therefore, the exchange is submitting this proposal in order to list and trade the shares of the active proxy portfolio shares of the Schwab Aerial ESG ETF. Now, the key features of this active proxy portfolio shares. While funds issuing active proxy portfolio shares will be actively managed and to that extent will be similar to managed fund shares, active uh, proxy portfolio shares differ from managed fund shares in the following important respects. First, in contrast to managed fund shares, which are actively managed funds listed and traded under NYSE ARCA rule 8.600-E, and for which a disclosed portfolio is required to be disseminated at least once daily, the portfolio for an issue of active proxy portfolio shares will be publicly disclosed within at least 60 days following the end of every fiscal quarter in accordance with normal disclosure requirements, otherwise applicable to open-end investment companies. Basically what they're doing they're creating this uh, new type of ETF, Active Proxy Portfolio, um, that's basically going to have less reporting requirements. Um, that's not, never good for ETFs because they can change daily. Um, basically, uh, in connection with the creation and redemption of Active Proxy Portfolio shares, such creation or redemption may be exchanged for a proxy portfolio and or cash with a value equal to the next determined NAV or net asset value. So they can actually swap portfolios. That sounds great. A series of active proxy portfolio shares will disclose the proxy portfolio on a daily basis, which, as described above, is designed to track closely the daily performance of the actual portfolio of a series of active proxy portfolio shares, instead of the actual holdings of the investment company, as provided by a series of managed fund shares. Now, the Commission has previously approved and noticed for immediate effectiveness proposals for the listing and trading on the exchange of series of active proxy portfolio shares under NYSE ARCA rule 8.601-E. Charles Schwab Investment Management will be the investment advisor to the fund. Aerial Investments LLC will be the sub-advisor. State Street Bank and Trust Company will serve as the fund's custodian and transfer agent. SEI Investments Distribution Company will act as the distributor for the fund. Now, well, I've brought this up in the past, but basically they're setting up firewalls. So there's going to be a firewall set up between investment advisor and broker dealer so there's no insider trading going on no conflicts of interest there's going to be firewalls between broker dealers and broker dealer affiliates set up as well um in theory to prevent collusion insider trading we, we can guess it's going to happen anyway but basically in connection with the establishment of a firewall between the investment advisor and the broker dealer reflects the applicable open end funds portfolio, not an underlying benchmark index, as is the case with index-based funds. So it's not like your typical index-based fund. This is, is to track the portfolio of something, not, not the underlying series. This is getting weird. So also, in addition, um, any person, entity, including a custodian, reporting authority, distributor, administrator who has access to non-public information, regarding this portfolio um, or changes to it must be subject to procedures reasonably designed to prevent the use and dissemination of material non-public info regarding the applicable investment company. Basically what they're doing is saying no insider trading mofos. Moreover, if any such person or entity is registered as a broker dealer or affiliated with a broker dealer, such person or entity will erect <laughs> and maintain that firewall between a person or entity and the broker dealer. Do you think that's really gonna happen? Do you think they're gonna really set up a firewall sec. No, amend this shit, man. They're not, if you leave these people to do it on their own, they're going to commit crime. You know that, Gary, come on, bro, amend this shit. Sorry. Anyways, description of the fund. According to the registration statement, the advisor or sub-advisor, 
in this case, Schwab and uh, Ariel, will identify a proxy portfolio for the fund. The fund's proxy portfolio is not the fund's actual portfolio, but will be designed to closely track the daily performance of the fund through a factor model analysis of the actual portfolio. I mean, so now we're got an ETF portfolios, betting on ETF portfolios. What the hell, Gary? The fund will generate the proxy portfolio by applying the factor model to a model universe comprised of securities that the fund can purchase. Let me guess, what are we gonna include in this? The proxy portfolio will only include investments in the fund it is permitted to hold, while the proxy portfolio and the actual portfolio will likely hold some or many of the same securities. The proxy portfolio and actual portfolio may not include identical securities. Okay. The composition of the proxy portfolio will be published on the fund's website each business day before commencement of trading in the shares and will include the following information for each portfolio holding in the proxy portfolio. One, ticker symbol. Two, QSIP. Three, description of holding. Four, quantity of each security or other asset held. And five, percentage weight of the holding in the proxy portfolio. Nothing special there. And by the way, uh, according to the registration statement, a proxy overlap is the percent weight overlap between the holdings of the prior business day's proxy portfolio compared to the actual portfolio's holding. That has formed the basis for the fund's calculation of NAV at the end of the prior business day. Sorry about all the jargon. Uh, these are very jargony. NAV, net asset value. When we say proxy portfolio, we're saying, yeah, I'm going to have a portfolio, but it's not a portfolio. It's a proxy portfolio, meaning I don't really own any of the underlying shares. I'm just tracking the shares of another portfolio. Insanity. And it can be reconstituted daily. So while they're, you know, they have shares in there, they're not real shares. These are synthetic. So yippee. Schwab Aerial ESG ETF. The fund's holdings will conform to the permissible investments as set forth in the application and exemptive order. And the holdings will be consistent with all requirements in the, uh, in the application and exemptive order. Now, pursuant to the exemptive order, this is the kind of shit that's included in this. So, fund will include, <laughs> they say, only the following instruments. ETFs on a U.S. exchange, exchange traded notes, ETNs on a U.S. exchange. So we have ETFs, ETNs, U.S. exchange uh, traded common stocks, common stocks listed on a foreign exchange that trade on such exchange contemporaneously with the shares, foreign common stocks in the exchange's core trading session. U.S. exchange traded preferred stocks, U.S. exchange traded American depository receipts or ADRs, U.S. exchange traded real estate investment trusts, U.S. exchange traded commodity pools, U.S. exchange traded metals trusts, currency trusts. Exchange traded futures that trade contemporaneously with the fund shares. In addition, in addition, the fund may hold cash and cash equivalents, short term U.S. Treasury securities, government money market funds and repurchase agreements. Only. Do you guys even read this shit? Gary, if you need someone to read this shit, I will read them and tell you how stupid they are. Now, pursuant to the application and the exemptive order, the fund will not hold short positions or invest in derivatives <laughs> other than ex U.S. exchange traded futures, will not borrow for investment purposes, and will not purchase any securities that are illiquid investments at the time of purchase. That doesn't mean shit. Wording, people. It's all about wording. They say, or invest in derivatives other than futures, will not borrow for investment purposes, but that doesn't mean they're not going to borrow. <laughs> oh, geez. According to the registration statement, the fund's investment objective is to seek long-term capital appreciation. Well, no shit. The fund will invest primarily in exchange-traded equity securities of U.S. companies that have been evaluated based on certain environmental, social, and government's criteria. <laughs> GameStop. Okay, uh, 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 AMC. Yeah. Anyways, the fund will normally invest in exchange-traded equity securities of small and mid capitalization companies. Well, hoop de doo. No shorts of derivatives. I'll believe it when I see it. Now, investment restrictions. The shares of the fund will conform to the initial and continued listing criteria under Rule 8.601 E. The fund's holdings will be limited to those described herein and consistent with permissible holdings as described in the application and exemptive order. Now, the fund's investments, including U.S. exchange traded funds, will be consistent with its uh, investment objective and will not be used to enhance leverage. Bullshit. Although certain U.S. exchange traded futures and other investments may result in leverage. There you go. That is, the fund's investments will not be used to seek performance 
That is the multiple or inverse multiple or two times, three times, basically leveraged of the fund's primary, primary broad-based securities benchmark index. So no leveraged uh, shit going on here. That's good. Now, creations and redemptions of the shares. According to the registration statement, the trust, in this case, which will be State Street, will issue and sell shares of the fund only in specified minimum size creation units that will be 5,000 shares. According to the registration statement, when they want to redeem or purchase, creation units are typically purchased and redeemed in kind, but they may also be purchased and redeemed in whole or in part for cash in the advisor's discretion. Why are you giving them discretion? Read it, Gary, read it. Accordingly, purchasers will generate would generally be required to purchase creation units by making an in-kind deposit of a designated portfolio for securities. So if you want to purchase, you're gonna to have to purchase you're gonna to have to purchase creation units by making a deposit of a designated portfolio of securities? Oh dear God. If there's a difference between the nav attributable to the creation unit and the aggregate market value of the creation basket, the party conveying instruments with lower value will also pay to the other an amount in equal uh, in cash equal to that difference. Jeez Louise, they made this very convoluted everyone, sorry. Basically, this is crime. Redemption of creation units would work much like the process to purchase creation units, but in reverse. Shareholders redeeming their shares will generally receive an in-kind transfer of specified instruments. Oh, okay. So in this case, there's no liquidity required? They're just transferring shares that's weird the names and quantities of the instruments that constitute the deposit securities and redemption instruments for the fund which is the creation basket will be the same as the fund's proxy portfolio except to the extent purchases and redemptions are made entirely or in part on a cash basis redemption of creation units would work much like the process to creation units but in reverse shareholders redeeming their shares will generally receive an income transfer Oh, that's the same paragraph. Wow, I'm an idiot. Anyways, the identity and quantity of investments in the proxy portfolio will be publicly available on the fund's websites before the commencement of trading. Okay, that's good. In shares on each business day. The website will also include information relating to the proxy overlap and tracking error, as discussed above. Trading rules. Um, they deem the shares to be equity securities, thus rendering trading in the shares subject to the normal trading uh, governance. Shares will trade on the NYSE. ARCA, Marketplace, and all trading sessions. Um, for quoting and entry of orders and securities on the NYSE, uh, ARCA Marketplace is going to be 0 0.01 as far as a minimum price variation, with the exception of securities that are priced less than $1, for which the MPV for order entry is 0 0.0001. Seller boxing! The shares will conform to the initial and continued listing criteria under NYSE ARCA, Rule 8.601-E. The exchange has appropriate rules to facilitate trading in the shares during all trading sessions. The shares will conform to the initial and continued listing criteria under the act. Yeah, yeah, we have whatever, Gary. We know they're not going to do it, Gary. Surveillance. We know you're not going to surveil shit, Gary. The exchange presents represents that trading in shares will be subject to the existing trading surveillances that don't exist, Gary, because you don't do your job right. You don't read the, the filings, man. So I get it. You you can you can you can talk. That's great. Let's see some action, bro. Their surveillance referred to above generally focuses on detecting securities trading outside their normal patterns. Bullshit, which could be indi indicative of manipulation. Yeah, no shit. Okay, I can't read this crap, Gary. With respect to the fund, all investment representations made in this filing regarding the description of the portfolio or reference asset, limitations on portfolio holdings or reference assets, or the applicability of the exchange listing rules specified in the rule filing shall constitute continued listing requirements for listing the shares on the exchange. Yada, yada, yada. In essence, the exchange does not believe that the proposed rule change will impose any burden on competition that is not necessary or appropriate in further of the purposes of the act. So they're saying right there, we're not going to impose any burden or competition that's not necessary. So we're, we're going to say we're going to impose burden, but it's not going to be unnecessary burden. It's going to be necessary. The exchange believes the proposed rule would permit listing and trading of another type of actively managed ETF that has characteristics different from the existing actively managed and index ETFs that would introduce additional competition among various ETF products to the benefit of investors. Bullshit, Gary. You know why? I can't 
even imagine why I would want to do this. Invest in a proxy portfolio? It makes no sense, man. This filing sucked ass, and today is not going as according to what we all thought. Uh, but hey, there's still time. So I could be wrong, and I will admit it when I am wrong. I'll, at 3 o'clock, I'll make a video saying I'm a retard, and I was wrong. I love you all.